Ableton Live is an incredibly powerful tool for live performance, hence the name Ableton Live. But it's also an incredibly powerful and capable tool in the studio to create and produce your own music. In fact, it's my favorite way to quickly capture ideas and record ideas to get them out of my head into the program. But what happens if you don't have a MIDI controller? What if you wanna uh, record a drum beat? What if you want to play a bass line, but you don't have a MIDI controller? What can you do? Well, you could obviously use the trackpad on your laptop or use a mouse with your computer to draw MIDI notes in. But for me, I personally found that that's not the best way to get the ideas out of my head into Ableton Live. Well. Ableton has created a really cool feature that allows us to use this guy, the keyboard connected to our computer, uh, to play MIDI notes and play MIDI parts into Ableton Live. So in this video, I wanna walk you through how to do that uh, and how to enable that feature. So if I go into Live, the feature is called Computer MIDI Keyboard, and I can go up to this piano icon up here and click that to enable the Computer MIDI Keyboard. Alternatively, I could press M on my keyboard to turn that on and off. So we're gonna leave that on. I've got a piano part loaded in um, here to, uh, to Ableton, and um, let's pull up my keyboard and I'll play some piano for you, okay? So I'm gonna hit this note, right? I could play uh, a major chord there, I could play a minor chord here. Right, I'm not gonna play amazing jazz parts on this. I'm sure someone could. Um, I can't play amazing jazz piano anyway, but uh, it's gonna be a little more difficult for me on this keyboard. But I could still play and capture parts in. Now let's talk about what you get when you're using your keyboard. Uh, essentially we get from A to L is uh, C to D, okay? So we get a full octave and then we go up to D. Um, these keys right here, A to L, represent white keys on our keyboard. And then in between, whatever we would have on our piano, uh, we have our sharp keys, right? Our black keys. Uh, and so let's walk through what this is. So starting on A, that is a C, and then we have C sharp, D, D sharp, and then we have E. We have no sharp here, so we have F. F sharp, G, G sharp, A. A sharp, and again, I'm using sharps. You piano players are going to sign A sharp, it's B flat, but you get the point. B, C, C sharp, D, okay? So if you think about this as a keyboard, we have white keys, we have two sharps, we have three sharps, or accidentals, whatever you wanna call it, um, and then we have a, a sharp right there, okay? So this is a good thing, just, just mess with this. If you wanna play chords, you can combine these notes, right? Uh, we could play major triads, minor, I could play a, C, oh, there we go, C minor if I wanted, uh, by doing A, E, and G, right? So that's that's kind of fun to mess with. But we have four other buttons that I wanna mention. So right now, um, let me show you in live, actually. If you look down here at the bottom of live screen, um, as I uh, do this, you'll see it says computer keyboard, your current octave is set to C3 to D4, uh, which means when I play, I'm hearing uh, C3, you know, C major chord starting on C3. If I wanna change the octave, all I have to do is press the Z key, Z key for my friends across the pond, um, uh, to switch to go to a lower octave. If I wanna to go to a higher octave, I can press the X key to go up. Okay, which is super nice. So to change octave, use Z to go down an octave and use X to go up an octave. And then again, uh, it's a useful utility down here. It'll tell you what octave you're on when you're doing that. Now, what about velocity? Velocity is how hard or soft you play the key. So if I'm playing a MIDI controller, it's super helpful, maybe playing a drum part or playing a piano part to vary my velocity to make it feel realistic. Now, um, it's a little hard to do there. You know, there's obviously, this is not velocity sensitive, so I can't do that here, but I can change my velocity um, as I'm playing notes. So let's play that C major chord. And if I wanna make it a little softer, change my velocity, I could press C here to go down. Right, you hear how quiet it is there. Now let's press V to go back up to where we were. Let's press V all the way up to 127. Now listen how much louder that is. So to change velocity, we could press C to go down uh, a velocity level, and we could press V to go up. Let me show you live what that looks like. Um, again, uh, keep your eyes down here, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. C is gonna change velocity down, right? All the way to velocity of one, which is barely audible. And then we'll press V to go up, and that's gonna go all the way to velocity of 127. So I guess technically, if you're a skilled enough piano player, you could play, change your velocity. All 
right? And play your chords again. Um, it sounds like I'm playing jazz, but it's just all accidental notes there. Uh, so that's a useful utility. Again, uh, kind of learn your, your notes here or just kind of fiddle around to try it out. Uh, and then you can use velocity up and down, or excuse me, octave up and down, and then uh, your velocity here. Now, it's also, again, uh, helpful when doing drum beats. So if I go to drums and we'll do like a 909 core kit, I can load this in. And then I could press A on my keyboard. And you'll notice when I press an A on my keyboard, this is not playing in the correct octave. So how do we adjust that? We hit Z to go down to the correct octave. And I'm going to hit this, OK, symbol. I don't want that. I want that to be kick. Perfect. So now it isn't perfect. It's, it's a little imperfect. But I can find my parts here, right? And so I can play every white guy drum beat uh, that every white guy plays behind a kit, I could play that directly on my computer keyboard, which is great. So even with drum programming, this is helpful and beneficial. And there's other, other tools like recording um, in a loop and overdubbing that will help us. But there's one final piece that I wanna show uh, in this video. So uh, this is great to use my computer mini keyboard. Let's go back to our piano sound here. Let's go up a, an octave or two, there we go. Uh, this is super helpful, but there's another feature in live that's that's very nice, but um, could potentially come into conflict with what we're doing here. So I'm going to do Command K, which allows me to MIDI map certain features in live. And um, let's say I want to map this drum kit on and off. Uh, and I'm going to pick A on my keyboard. So I'm going to press A on my keyboard to turn that on and off. I'll do Command K to get out of that. What I'm doing there is I'm using key assign. Okay? It's a feature I use often uh, to use uh, my computer keyboard to control features in live. So now let's turn that drum kit on and off. So I'm gonna press A, okay? And you notice when I do that, what the heck is happening? It's not turning my drum kit off. I do Command K, I look at this, uh, it's mapped. What is happening? It's, it's playing a piano part. Well, if you look up here, the upper right hand corner of our screen, Ableton has conveniently placed the computer mini keyboard next to key. Watch what happens when I press A. Notice that key and our computer MIDI keyboard are both lighting up. What that means is with computer MIDI keyboard enabled, it's always going to steal our key mappings on our keyboard. So if I happen to use one of the keys that's used uh, in, in this setup, Z, X, C, V, A to L, or any of our sharps, uh, any of our black keys, if I tend to use that to map like I was trying to use A, the computer MIDI keyboard is going to steal that and not allow me to use it for mapping. Now, here's what's nice about this. If I disable computer MIDI keyboard and I press A now, notice that this is turning on and off. Now, you could technically, there could be a scenario where you use the computer MIDI keyboard to play parts, but then you also use the same keys to control things in live. I have found it's too hard for me to keep track of. I'm not a smart guy. It's too hard for me to keep track of which mode is enabled and turned on and off at different times. So I would just suggest if you're doing key mapping, don't use the keys on your keyboard here. Maybe use a MIDI controller instead, or, uh, or, or if you're doing key assign, don't use your computer's keyboard uh, to play MIDI parts. So that's a look at how to set up and use computer MIDI keyboard in Ableton Live. It's a great feature. It's an awesome feature to get ideas out of your head and capture them into Ableton Live. If you like content like this, if you're into using Ableton Live in the studio or on the stage, uh, I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central. Uh, but in order to see that, you've got to hit subscribe so you could subscribe to the channel. It's completely free, but you'll get access to this content every single day at 10 a.m. Central. And then also hit the bell icon. I always tell people, hit the bell icon, download the YouTube app on your phone. And when I post new content, you'll look, you'll see uh, a pop-up that says, hey, Will's talking about this. And if that relates to you and that's something you're interested in, click through and watch. And if not, just catch me on the next video the next day at 10 a.m. Central. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one, everybody. Take care. Bye.